Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com. Thank you for listening to this St. Louis on the Air podcast brought to you by Lindenwood University's Hammond Institute for Free Enterprise. Examining market approaches to help solve economic and social issues, Hammond.Institute. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Don Marsh. We have this month's Sauce Magazine hit list. Joining me in studio are Sauce Magazine Managing Editor Heather Hughes and staff writer Adam Rothbarth. Good to see you again. Thank you. Adam, welcome to St. Louis on the Air. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Well, I've got a somewhat limited choice. Is it, Heather, is it because of the uh, winter winter season? I, I mean, it just, you never know how many restaurants are going to open in a month, yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's get on with it. Uh, let's start with uh, Elmwood. Okay. Yeah, we were very excited uh, about the opening of Elmwood. This is a new restaurant by former niche uh Alumni Adam Altnether is the chef, and Chris Kelling uh, manages the restaurant. Um, they're both incredible. We were talking before we came in here about how like how smart of a restaurant Elmwood is, the way that it's designed, um, the menu, uh, everything about it is. We're very excited. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a beautiful space. It's actually in the former live juke joint dueling piano bar space in uh, Maplewood. It's right off of Manchester on Sutton. But they got um, – the space was divided in half, and they're in the one that is farthest from Manchester on Sutton. Um, it's beautifully designed. Like I said, there are about 100 seats. David Stein, woodworker, um, made the tables. They have these really – Smart um, two top tables on a banquette that are hinged so they can fold up and become um, larger for bigger parties, which is really great. They have a pretty big bar. Um, it's really nice. And uh, Adam, you, you've been most recently. You want to talk about the food a little bit? Yeah, the food's great. I've been a few times. Um, a lot of vegetable forward stuff. Uh, what's most interesting about the kitchen is that they have a Jasper grill. It's a charcoal oven and grill. Uh, It's one of the only ones in the country like it. I think it might be the only one Mm -hmm. uh, in the United States. Um, And so they're doing a lot of really good meat and vegetables on that grill. Um, My favorite starter, I think, has been the charred sweet potato. It's really good, pureed, very tasty. Looks really nice, plating's amazing. Uh, Mint and pomegranate, really awesome charred pita comes with that. Uh, we also really like the grilled broccoli as a really amazing tahini dressing that's served with it. So it's not too complex, but the flavors are unreal, and it really has that just incredible grilled vegetable flavor. What makes this grill so special? Um, you kind of have the flavor of working with charcoal, but it's coming from like an extremely controlled indoor environment. Mm-hmm. Um There's a chef I really like. I haven't eaten his food, but I've read some of his stuff and seen him on Chef's Table uh, and in some other shows named Francis Malman, and he is uh, Argentinian and and Patagonia. And his thing is he kind of won every award in the world, and then he decided, uh, I'm actually just going to go into the forest and dig a hole and make a big fire and make food in there. And so that's what he's been doing. And I haven't eaten his food. I've wanted to, and I feel like this is probably the closest thing I've had yet. Uh, to what he's been doing. I think you've got to give him the assignment. Yeah, <laughs> I, go down there. I, th- I think that was a big hint right there. Yeah, I'm free yeah. for lunch. So. <laughs> How about the Sultan Mediterranean restaurant? Sultan Mediterranean opened in the Grove on Manchester. Um, it is uh, a, the sort of menu you might, you might expect a general Mediterranean menu, but um, Adam was saying it's um, Iraqi food. Yeah, it's Iraqi-inspired pretty heavily, but yeah, it's just a a Middle Eastern. Um, So our favorite things were, we love the baba ganoush. It's really smoky, um, really well done. I really liked the Ali Naza kebab plate, um, which is, it's sort of a bed of baba ganoush with two beautifully seasoned beef kebabs on top, really tender, really well spiced. Um, We also liked the sultan pilau, which is a dish um, it's a filo dough pocket filled with lamb shank pieces um, that's really juicy, really well done. Um, rice, nuts, and dried fruit. It's sort of like very savory but a little bit sweet and, again, very well spiced. It's sort of, um, you know, comfort food. Everything's really well done. 
Well, what distinguishes Mediterranean food from other foods? I mean, Italy's on the Mediterranean. <laughs> yeah, well, they're all, they have yeah. um, flavors. It yeah. just depends on uh, where you're from. These are, you know, uh, we talked about um, Barg Continental Restaurant mm. is Iranian food um, that's very closely related to this, or kebabs, those mm. sorts of the same flavors. I, I sort of think of it in terms of Northern Africa when I think of, quote, Mediterranean food. Is that They're related, a, a, yeah. an error on my part to think of No, I that? think there's a lot of overlap in all of those yeah. flavors and spices. It gets, all food is regional. Um, they share a lot of the same dishes, but they are all also have very unique flavors and things they do very well individually. Yeah, I think whether it's Moroccan or Israeli, Egyptian, or even Italian, yeah, a lot of olive oil, fresh herbs, lighter fair for the most part um nothing super heavy not a lot of fried stuff um well grilled stuff like that uh, mm -hmm. my favorite there was the dolma which is the stuffed grape leaf mm -hmm. uh really really good really awesome texture um a lot of times when you get that dish even at a restaurant or at the grocery store it's it's a little soggy because it's been sitting in mm -hmm. olive oil and vinegar for a while mm -hmm. uh but these grape leaves are really good um really good rice the fresh herbs, meat, filling in this uh, this one. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was one of the best I've had in St. Louis for sure. But Mediterranean food gets a lot of positive uh, attention these days, too, because it's supposed to be very healthy for you. Mm -hmm. A lot of doctors are, are recommending it, obviously. That olive oil is a big reason why, right, Adam? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and their, uh, their lentil soup is, is a good example of that. Like, it's very light, um, not too much oil, but a good amount. So it has, like, sort of that uh, really good flavor. And that's and, uh, really nice when you come in, they give you a complimentary bowl of that soup, which is really nice. Yeah, well, it's complimentary is always good. <laughs> always good. What's next, Heather? Uh, let's talk about Union 30 next. This is the restaurant inside Hotel St. Louis, which is on 705 Olive Street downtown. Um, it is sort of what you'd think from a luxury hotel. It's really beautiful. There's a ton of marble. They have velvet and leather furniture, very high ceilings, um, carved ceilings, which are really nice. Um, a big, beautiful bar with TVs, so it's you can go for a game. It's sort of um, all-purpose hotel dining in a lot of ways. They have a lunch menu that's full of sandwiches and burgers and stuff like that. Um, this is uh, executive chef Matt uh, Birkenmeyer, who was previously at Quincy Street Bistro, so you know the meat's going to be good. <laughs> um, he does comfort food very well. Dinner has uh, entrees like mac and cheese, sort of casual stuff, but I was really impressed by um, they have – uh, fish that's really well done too. I had one with um, risotto and saffron broth, which was just beautifully cooked, very tender, um, really well seasoned. So he can sort of go light or heavy, which is nice. And then you should not miss the smoker specials. Um, every day he'll have a different special that's coming off the smoker. I went on a Friday, so I got a 36-hour smoked beef short rib, and it comes mm. out on a huge bone. It's like Flintstone style. Um, Is the meat still on the bone after yes. 36 hours? <laughs> yeah, it's super tender. It falls mm. right off. Um, super savory, really, again, well-seasoned. And that comes on garlic uh, mashed potatoes, which were also really good. Sounds right. You, you always make a, a mention of the decor in the places, and obviously it's important. Yeah. Adam, what's more important to, to you as a diner? Is it the decor or the food? I think <laughs> it's both. Uh, when I sit down, the first thing I do, for better or worse, is look uh, under the glasses and uh, plates to see where they're coming from, especially if I really like the plates. So decor, uh, whether it's silverware, or like, uh, you know, somewhere like Louis that has like just amazing decor, you walk in there and you immediately feel great. Um, but if it doesn't have good food, then doesn't you know, make any difference what is on. Right, right? That's a, a needed thing. <laughs> okay, it looks like we've got another brewery in the mix. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a hit list unless there's a brewery, for exactly, sure. Exactly, exactly. And Adam, that's uh, down your uh, alley, right? Yeah, yeah. We got Old Herald Brewery and Distillery. Uh, it's at 115 East Clay Street over in Collinsville. Uh, I believe they opened around the holidays. Um, very good. It's like an sort of elevated local bar and grill. Uh, so they have a pretty wide menu, everything from burgers and fries to like a risotto. They have a pork belly BLT. And they have a really awesome poutine dish, which... Uh, I don't usually expect to have really great poutine in the Midwest, but this one is very good. It's got beef cheek, really good gravy, cheese curds, super tasty. Um, so Old Herald Brewery uh, owners are Derek and Whitney Reiser, and the uh, head brewer is Torin O'Brien, who came from Perennial. 
Uh, and their their beer does actually kind of remind me of perennial. The Printer's Ink Stout was really, really good. It's sort of a chocolate coffee forward, uh, delicate, nuanced stout that's sort of like the Abraxas, but not quite as heavy. It's like a very good, balanced, refreshing stout, which I really liked. Uh, the Kolsch was very good. Uh, cocktails are also really neat because they do their own in-house uh, Ardent Spirits distillery. Uh, so you can get vodka, gin, whiskey, drinks that are all in-house, everything made, uh, really good stuff. Are we ever going to reach the point, uh, Heather, do you think, where we're going to saturate the market with breweries? I mean, <laughs> seriously, I'm, I love them, and they're great, and people love them, obviously, but there are a lot of them around here. There are a lot. Um, I think something like Old Herald, one, it's in Collinsville, so people, there aren't as many in Collinsville. Mm-hmm. It's great for uh, locals to have somewhere close, and it's it's a big restaurant as well. Um, it's not just a brew pub, but I think, I don't know, it depends um, where you're opening, what you're trying to do with it. Uh, I'm sure there is saturation eventually, but I, I hope we're not there yet. <laughs> yeah, we, we say it as if we're kidding, but we're really not. It, it, every time we get together, uh, there's another, there is another, another one. It's another, true. another one happening. Well, what else is uh, what else is on the horizon for you guys and for and for the restaurant world here? Well, I wanted to mention um, our Reader's Choice poll is up. Um, everyone should vote. We have two rounds. This is our first. It's the nomination round. So write in your favorite restaurants, chefs, bartenders. Um, it shouldn't take more than ten minutes or so to take the poll. Um, go to readerschoice.saucemagazine.com, and this round ends March 6th, so do it before then. <laughs> okay, and we'll put a link, obviously, to yes. your site on our website at stlpublicradio.org. Just a second or two left, Adam. How tough is it for a writer to have the restaurant beat? <laughs> it's, it's a horrible job. <laughs> but it, as they say, somebody's got to do somebody's it, right? Somebody's got to do He's it. He's brave. Yeah. <laughs> But thank you both so much for being with us. Heather Hughes, great to see you again, as always, in Admiral Rothbart. For your inaugural flight on St. Louis on the Air, we're happy to have you with us. Thank you. Both, of course, from Sauce Magazine. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com.